What's going on guys? So today I wanted to do a second video on building a watch list, kind of like my morning routine type deal. And after I get my watch list, this is what I do. So I'm going to start from the very beginning, even though I have another video that's more detailed as to how to, you know, even find a couple of stocks, right? So I'm going to jump right into it. Here we go. Go to Finviz, go to Screener. Go to technical, go to performance, up 30% right here on the week. Now we have, and I like to go click on the chart section, and now we have a bunch of charts, and I look for charts like, kind of like this. This is a little bit different, but, you know, stocks that are moving. If you just see a stock, you know, like going sideways, you're not going to really have much to trade. So I like to try to find stocks maybe that are going down and then big gap up, big, big move forward, like kind of like Kodak. Uh, I short this thing in the nines, but this has been going down and now all of a sudden it's gone from like looks like $2.25 to 380 That might be a something I would look into. FLNT, you see it's kind of moving and then all of a sudden big day up, all right? So stuff like that. Uh, I'm just going to use this one. This stock went up like 100% yesterday. You can't even see it because this company is so bad. But I'm going to dive into this and show you guys what I do after I find a stock that I want to add to my watch list. This is basically watch list building part two. So let's go. I pull up my tool that I built and I come down here. And I enter the ticker. I already have the ticker in there. I made this video once and forgot to put on the sound. <laughs> so, basically, I'm going to go through this, the, all these, right? So, uh, days running. This would be day two. This is an example. The stock's not running today. It's already down 8%, you can see here. But let's just say it was still up, right? So, I would go in here for my little tool that I got. And I would say 55% score five. Now, second thing, shares outstanding. This is where you go to the SEC filings, right? Pull up any. Don't have it. ANY. Pull up the, you can find the shares outstanding in the quarterly report right here. They have 1.93 million. I put 1.92. That's a mistake. Let's just fix it real quick. All right. And then this on my little scoring tablet table, this would be a one because I don't short stocks with floats or shares outstanding or floats under two mil. Um, and then so we can see here, right, the SEC filings will give you a more accurate number. See how in here it says 1.88 mil? We know for a fact it's at least 1.92 mil. If not more, we'd have to do more research to see. But this is just the part two. That's part three. So we go to the float, 1.56 mil. We're going to use this number, 1.5. We look here. This is a one as well. Institutional ownership, we're going to take their number. It could be different. I would have to look into it in part three, but this is just a base. Uh, this is just to get us going. Um, and that's a four. Insider ownership, 1.3%. Right? You'd have to look in the form fours for that. This is a five. Earnings per share, this is a five. They lose $24 million. Um, okay, hold on, let me show you uh, $24 million, $24 per share. How I found that out, I came here, I went to my software earnings per share, trailing 12 months. That's TTM is trailing 12 months, so you guys know. MRY, most recent year. TTM, trailing 12 months. MRQ, most recent quarter. So, last 12 months, this company has lost $24 per share. Uh, book value... It says 2.7, tangible book value, negative 23.9. That's what I used. So those are the next two uh, little columns that we have to fill in. 24, I already got that. That's god-awful. That's a 5. That is so bad. Uh, oh, and this is really the funny part about this company. Current ratio. If you just come on here and look at 
the balance sheet, you will laugh. Current assets, 21 mil. Current liabilities, 66. They're doing a really good job. <laughs> Anyways. So, we got that in there. Keep on going. What's going on, computer? All right. Got that. Book value. This is a current ratio. This is so bad. I, it's one of the worst I've seen. Bam, five, five. Net income, negative six mil. That's also a five. Put two negatives in there. Two negatives equals a positive. This is a negative. Gross margin, 30%. That's not a five. That's about a three in my book. Uh, cash. So they had five mil. I mean, they had 2.86 million. Go to the balance sheet, 2.86 million. Then I factored in the um, cash burn. They're burning about $6 million per quarter. So there's three months and a quarter. And you divide $6 million by three. That's $2 million a month that they're losing. So uh, I factored that into the cash burn. And so this cash position, this, this weight, I changed the weights because this is like my little formula, but this weight is not really much. I just like to know how much cash they have and what they do with it. Uh, so we'll just give them a four for that. But their cash burn is a five because it's they're really a negative three mil. Uh, you have to look into the SEC filings, and that's the next step. I'm take that off there. Uh, so I would look into the SEC filings, see how they're running their business, what cash they have raised, all that kind of stuff. And that's in the next step. That's way more advanced, but I'll go into that too at a later date. Uh, another thing to note is uh, if you look at the balance sheet, this company actually has debt. And no, like, no debt is sometimes bad. If you have too much debt and you can't pay it, that's very bad. Uh, but usually these really bad companies can't even get any debt because they're so bad that no one will lend them anything. Okay, so when you see a debt is zero, don't think that, oh, this is a good company. It's got no debt. No, it's just so bad that they can't even get debt if they wanted it. So just know that this is a five on their debt. I don't know if they're going to be able, I don't know. What's their interest payments? Uh, I'll look at that later. You have to go to the income statement or cash flow networking uh networking capital that's how much money you have to you know keep your business going right they have none they're negative dilution do they have dilution yes i can see that i don't know how much we'd have to look into it i'm sure it's a decent amount considering that they've accumulated deficit they've lost 173 million dollars since running so I'm sure they have plenty of dilution. We can look at the cash flow really quick just to get a idea. Financing items, issuing stock. So yeah, look how much stock they issue. If we go to the annual report, issuing to, they've, they're just surviving off issuing stock basically. Okay. And it looks like it's just going to get worse. So there's going to be dilution. Okay, and now I go to the chart. I already did this, uh, but I would go to the chart. I'd pull up the one year, and I would add my, my resistance lines. Add, add. These are the points where I would be looking to short this company. Now I go to the one-month chart. You can see if I was to trade this yesterday, I would have given it a test here at 336. And then an ad here at 435, and I would be managing my risk that way. And then ultimately, my highest ad would be at six dollars and sixteen cents. Likely, I didn't trade this yesterday. I wouldn't have gotten filled. I probably wouldn't have taken this move. But this one, once it broke this and was going higher, I would have definitely tried it here. Uh, using, you know, this would be a starter. Because this is going back down to like 150, no doubt. And then once I'm going to try to figure out what kind of offering they can do to raise money. See if they have anything left on the shelf. But uh, yeah. So chart resistance, there's definitely a lot. Five. Uh, I haven't gone into the executive 
uh, compensation and that stuff, but I guess we could look. Let's just look real quick. Let's see if we can find it in the 10K. Um, security um, executive compensation, page 46. Oh my God. So these guys are, their salary. Look at this. This is such a joke. This company is losing tons, $6 million a year. They're paying Eric Kelly, this has got to be like the CEO, uh, $400,000 a year. Plus, look at all these other compensations he's getting. Eight, almost a million dollars in stock rewards. This amount compares wards restricted stock at value three nine share twenty four. This is a joke. This company's, and they're not just paying him. They're obviously paying a lot of money. Why are they losing so much money? They're paying for these guys for failing at business. You can throw me in there and I'll help you lose money and you can pay me $400,000 a year. Uh, news, I didn't read the news, but that's something that you would factor in. Let's just give it a three for neutral because I'm not looking into it really. This stock isn't really uh, interesting me yet. If it goes back up to four, I'll be on it. All right, Form 4s, again, that takes a little bit more research. If I was really interested in this company, I would crush it out, knock it out, get it in there. Uh, but anyways, overall, oh, this company has 429 employees. If a company has less employees, kind of a red flag. So if this company had four employees, major red flag. But this company has 429 employees, so they are trying to do something. They're just really bad at it uh, so far. I don't know. I haven't researched the products. I would go into that in step three. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So these are kind of uh, next step type questions that I would answer. But overall, this stock got a score of 88. That is god awful. That is one of the worst scores. Anything in the above like 85 is on my watch list as a short. Um, let's go to research. Let's look at the income statement real quick. Let's see if they have revenue growth. So they do have revenue growth, right? So this could be a potential company in the future that we can look into. Now we have to check all of the overhead dilution. A lot of work. A lot, a lot of work. But it could be worth it because that's what I did with Tandem. And Tandem went from $2 to $52. I think it even went to $54. And this is all I did. I sat and I took tandem. I did all the math one day and I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait until this company blows up. And next thing you know, it was a huge win for me. So even though this isn't a buy yet, that doesn't mean it's not a buy in the future. If we look at, I didn't even look at what they do. Canada based company software development sector. The company delivers data management, that's the application and virtualization solutions through hybrid cloud cloud. So it's a cloud company. Uh, Obviously, there could be a lot of potential. They're really growing their revenues. This is a four five million dollar company with uh, revenue a share, 73 mil. Uh, we should take a deeper look at this one. This is trash numbers wise. Now, if they can start changing some things up, you listen to the conference call, you see where their break even point is. Uh, they have gross margins of 30%. Where, where are they spending so much money? right here i don't know if that's going to change we'd have to look but basically now we have the part two of the research done we know that this this company short term is in a lot of trouble low float i'm not shorting i don't short under two mil so this kind of is off the radar for me at the moment but they will be raising cash and we will see something happen with this company whether it goes higher uh we will see this could have a major move. Uh, you know, if they need to raise money, they might have to push it above the baby uh, shelf. That's way more advanced stuff, but that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's part two of building a watch list. This is how you weed out. So you go in there, you find the stocks that you want to look at, then you start weeding them out by this, and now you set up your trades as part three. So hopefully this video helps. Hopefully you guys liked it. If it does, give it a thumbs up. If you want more information on stocks, want to learn how to trade, all that type of stuff, subscribe to my channel. 
hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on Twitter. My DMs are always open, and hopefully I can help you guys. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm out of here. Peace.